Malayan heritage. Our Malayan ancestors had brought to our shores their ancestral culture. At ito ito po yung mga namanan natin sa kanila. Food and drinks. Sa food and drinks, rice is the staple food for early Filipinos. So ito yung pinakapangunahin nating pagkain noong unang panahon, yung ating bigas. Also carabao meat, pork, chicken, sea turtles, fish, bananas, and other fruits and vegetables. Yan yung mga pagkain na naman natin sa mga Malay na kung saan until now ay nakakain pa rin natin. They cook their foods in an earthen pots or in a bamboo tubes. So, niluluto nila ang kanilang pagkain sa pamagitan ng mga pots at saka bamboo tubes. Gumagamit sila ng apoy sa pagluluto. They use banana plants as plates and coconut shells as drinking cups. So, yan yung ginagamit nila sa pagkain at sa pag-inom. Tuba is the popular wine of our ancestors made from coconut. So, yan yung pinakakilala na inumin ng ating mga katutubo. Other wines manufactured by ancient Filipinos were the following. We have the Basi wine. It is the Lucano wine made from sugar cane. Ito yung pinakakilalang inumin ng mga Ilocano. We have also the Pangasi wine. It is a Visayan wine made from fermented rice. Next, we have the Lambanog. It is a Tagalog wine taken from coconut palm. So, ito din ang pinakakilalang inumin ng mga Tagalog. Another is the Tapoy wine. It is an igorot wine distilled from rice. Pero hindi pa ganyan ang packaging noon. ba diba? Social na ang packaging ngayon. So, next naman ay nandyan naman yung mode of dressing. Ano-ano naman yung mga namanan natin in terms sa pananamit? For men, collarless, short sleeve jacket, cold kangan, and a strip of cloth called bahag. Yan yung damit ng mga lalaki. Instead of hat, they use putong, a piece of cloth to wear around the head. So, noon, hindi pa sila gumagamit ng hat. Instead, gumagamit sila ng putong. So, makita nyo naman sa larawan na mayroon siyang short sleeve jacket, bahag at saka putong. Para naman sa mga babae, a white sleeve jacket, cold baro, and a skirt, cold patadyong. Yan naman yung para sa mga babae. Yan. So, makikita nyo naman yung damit ng babae na baro and patadyong. Their jewels consisted of gold necklaces, gold bracelets, large gold earrings, and gold rings, and these jewels are filled with agates, carnelians, pearls, and other precious gems. Another thing na namanan natin sa mga Malay ay yung mga tattoos. It served two purposes. 
First is to enhance their bodily beauty. So, para mapaganda yung kanilang katawan ay nagpapalagay sila ng tattoo. Pangalawa naman is to show their war record. So, kapag nananalo sila sa war, nagpapatato sila kasi it symbolizes na naging uh, matagumpay sila sa labanan or sa war. Next is yung houses. So, ano ba yung namanan natin in terms of houses? Ang mga bahay noon is made of wood, bamboo, and palm leaves. So, gawa sa kawayan yung mga bahay noon. Gaya niyan. So, makikita nyo naman na gawa ito sa wood, bamboo, and palm leaves. It has bamboo ladder that could be drawn up at night or when the family is out. So, mayroon siyang hagdanan na pwede siyang alisin paggabi at kapag wala sa bahay yung pamilya. Next, it is also contained a gallery called Batalan where jars of water were kept for household purposes. So, mayroon silang area na tinatawag nila na batala na kung saan doon nilalagay yung tambakan nila ng tubig. Some of them live in three houses, especially the Bagubus and Kalingas. So, noon pa man, may mga tao na talaga na nagtatayo ng bahay sa ibabaw ng puno o sa taas ng puno. So, ang purpose naman yan is to be safe with the wild animals. And the Bajaus or the Sea Gypsies of the Sulu Sea still live in both houses. So, alam naman natin na mga Bajaus ay naninirahan sila sa kanilang mga boat houses. Kaya niyan. Next is natural courtesy and politeness. Early Filipinos were courteous and polite. When a man and woman walked together, the man was always behind the woman. Next is the cleanliness and neatness. They bath daily and they wash their hair with gogo and water. So, yung gogo, ito yung ginagamit nila bilang shampoo sa kanilang buho. Na ngayon ay ginagamit siya sa uh, bilang ingredients ng mga shampoo yung gogo. They chewed buyo which made their feet colored but strong. So, yan yung tinatawag natin na kung sa local dialect na natin is yung mama. So, yan yung buyo, itsura ng buyo. So, ginunguya nila yan para maging matiba yung uh, kanilang mga ngipin. Kaya lang naging makulay yung kanilang ngipin. They kept their homes clean. So, palagi nila pinapanatili yung kalinisan ng kanilang mga pamamahay. Next is amusements. Ito yung mga limbangan ng mga sinaunang Filipino. They were not always fighting or working. So, hindi sila magaanong nag-aaway or nagtatrabaho. So, mayroon silang iba't ibang limbangan. They held banquet to celebrate good harvest, a wedding, a religious sacrifice and a victory in war. So, lagi silang nagkakaroon ng kapiestahan. Kung saan doon sila nagsasalo-salo. They had such games as carabao races, wrestling, fencing, 
boat races and stone throwing contest. So yan yung ilan sa kanilang libangan noong unang panahon. Next is music. So mayroon na rin tayong sarili music noong unang panahon. They were music lovers. So, yung mga sinuunang Pilipino pala ay mga music lovers. They had various musical instruments and numerous dances and songs. So, alamin natin kung ano-ano iyon. Among their musical instruments were... So, they have the Kudyapi or Tagalog Getar. So, ganito yung itsura ng Kudyapi. Next is, we have the Kalaleng o Tinggian Nose Flute. So, mayroon din yung Nose Flute yung ibang tribe ng mga Pilipino. Another musical instrument is the kulintang. It is the Moro xylophone. So, gumamit sila ng kawayan for this musical instrument. Another is the tultugan. It is a Visayan bamboo drum. So, ngayon ginagamit nila ito sa kanilang festivals. Okay, next is the silbay. Ang silbay naman, it is the Ilocano reed flute. So, ito naman ay mag, uh, musical instrument ng mga Ilocano, yung silbay. Another is the surakan. Ito naman yung musical instrument ng mga subanon. So, it is a subanon symbol. So, ganyan. Ganyan yung surakan na tinatawag. Filipinos have also their folk dances. So, ano-ano yung mga folk dances of early Filipinos? Mayroon tayong kumintang. Ito yung Tagalog love dance. So, tingnan natin kung ano yung kumintang. So, yan yung kumintang. Another folk dance is the Mahinhin. Ito naman yung Tagalog courtship dance. So, ito yung sayaw kapag nang manliligaw yung mga kalalakihan sa mga kababaihan. Another is the Dandan Soy Bisayan Tuba Dance. So, alam naman natin kung ano yung tuba, ba diba? Isa itong um, uri ng wine na kung saan ay gawa sa ni uh, sa neo or sa coconut. So we have also the Kinutan or Ilocano's arts dance. So mayroon ding sariling folk dance ang mga Ilocano na tinatawag nilang Kinutan. Another is the Pau highlight. Pauhalay. It is the Moro Wedding Dance. So, ang hirap bigas din no? Pauhalay. It is a Moro Wedding Dance. So, ito yung sinasayaw nila during sa uh, kasalan na Moro Brothers and Sisters natin. So, we have also the Taduk. It is a Ting Dance. So, ito yung sayaw ng mga tinggi at yung Taduk. Okay, 
So we they have also their folk songs. Ano-ano yung mga folk songs na naman na natin sa mga Malay? Okay, so we have the Tagumpay or the Tagalog Song of Victory. We have the Dalio, it is a Negrito religious song. We have a Ayugko, it is a Igorot serenade song. We have also the Baktal, it is a Tagbanwa death song. The Dalyot, it is the Locano ballad song. The Kilay Kilay ng Tigian wine song. The tu- Tudub. Uh, it is the Gusan Harvest Song. Yun, so, yun yung mga ilan sa folk songs natin. So, we have also our, our marriage customs. So, ano yung marriage customs na naman na natin sa mga Malay? So, there is no strict prohibition against intermarriage. So, per- pwede mag-asawa ang isang uh, uh, tribe sa another tribes. So, the groom gave a dowry to the family of the bride. It is called Bigay Kaya. So, nagbibigay kaya yung groom sa pamilya ng babae or ng bride. The groom had to work in the house of the girl for a certain period. So, dapat magtrabaho yung lalaki sa bahay ng girl for a certain period. Okay. Early Filipinos practice divorce. So, yung sinaunang mga Pilipino ay nagpa-practice na sila ng divorce. Early Filipinos practice divorce. So, mayroong divorce noong unang panahon. The grounds for divorce were... So, ito po yung basihan na pwede tayong makipag-divorce. First is adultery on the part of the wife. Second is the desertion on the part of the husband. Next is yung loss of affection. So, ito yung tatlo na grounds for divorce. Another is we have the cruelty, insanity, and childlessness. So, ito yung mga basihan para pwede tayo makipag-divorce. Next is the wedding ceremony. Paano ba ang wedding ceremony noon? The friends of the groom went to the house of the bride to bring her to the home of the groom. So, kukunin ng pre- mga kaibigan ng groom yung girl sa bahay nila para dalhin siya sa bahay ng groom. So, the wedding ceremony could t- would take place at the groom's house. So, magaganap ang kasalan sa bahay ng lalaki. Pero di ba ngayon ay sa bahay na ng babae ginaganap yung kasalan. Okay, next is we have the government. In terms of government naman, ay... Early Filipinos had their own form of government. So, doon pa man, mayroon na tayong sariling uh, government. Each settlement was an independent kingdom called Barangay. So, mayroon na ang independent kingdom noon na tinatawag na Barangay. Ito yung binubuo ng 32-100 families. Each barangay consisted of 100 families. So, 32, 100 families, yan yung tiyatawag natin na barangay. Some barangays were big such as Subo or Cebu, Mactan or Mactan, Bigan or Vigan, and Manila or Manila. So, ito yung mga malalaking barangays na kung saan umaabot na sa hanggang 2,000 pamilya ang bumubuo sa isang barangay. The ruler of the barangay was called Dato, Hari, or Raha. So, yun yung namumuna sa barangay. In time of peace, 
He was the chief executive, legislator, and judge. So, kapag sa panahon ng kapayapaan, siya ay chief executive, legislator, and judge. And then, in time of war, he was the commander of the barangay warriors. So, sa panahon ng digmaan, siya naman yung commander ng uh, barangay warriors. So, the dato obtained his position by inheritance. So, ang pagiging dato ay namamana. So, kadalasan kapag ito, uh, napupunta ito sa... Uh, anak na lalaki. So, if the dato is childless, they will choose a man on the basis of his wisdom, physical strength, or wealth. So, kapag walang anak yung dato, ay naghahanap sila doon sa mga kalalakihan na may uh, talino, physical, and physical strength, and also the uh, wealth, or yung mayaman. So, we have also our own laws. So, ano yung law na namana natin sa kanila is the early Filipinos had both oral and written laws. Okay. So, the oral laws were the customs or gali of the race which were handed down orally, orally from generation to generation. So, ito yung mga batas na uh, ano lang, pinapasa-pasa mula sa mga angkan para sa uh, another generation. So, the, the written laws were promulgated by the datus with the help of the elders and were, po, were put into writing. So, mayroon din silang mga naisulat ng mga batas na kung saan ito ay uh, ginagawa ng dato with the help of the elders. It was announced by the barangay crier known as Umalukan. So, kung ano yung napag, uh, na, napag uh, kasunduan ng mga datos at saka mga elders ay ina-announce yun ng Umalukan. So, these were put on the bark of barks of the trees, wood, leaves, or cloth. So, dyan yun sinusulat yung mga written laws do unang panahon. So, next is, we have the religion. With the exemption of the Muslims in Mindanao and Sulu, the ancient Filipinos were pagans. Ibig sabihin, subasamba sila sa mga anito. Next, we have the burial and burning customs. Because of their belief in the next world, the early Filipinos took care in burying their dead. So, naniniwala sila sa kal- kabilang buhay. The corpse was involved as in ancient Egypt and was buried amidst deep sorrow near his home. So, nililibing sila sa malapit sa bahay. The mourning custom for a deceased that was called Larao. No colored clothes were worn. So, bawal magsuot ng mga damit na makukulay. All wars and quarrels were suspended. Next, we have the superstitions. The early Filipinos, like all other people on the earth, had their own superstitious beliefs. So, like for example, yung bawal magwalis pag gabi. Diba? Sabi nila bawal daw magwalis ng gabi dahil uh, parang winawal, winawalis mo daw yung magrasya o yung blessings. So, another is we have the languages. 
The early Filipinos had different languages and dialects, but by learning one Filipino language, it was comparatively easy to learn the other languages because all of them originated from a common linguistic source, the malayo polynesian language, the mother tongue of the Pacific races. Next, we have the writing. The early Filipinos used a sharp, pointed iron instrument called sipol as pen. So, yan yung ginagamit nila sa pagsulat. The direction of the writing was from left to right. The ancient alphabet consisted of three vowels and 14 consonants. Next, we have the literacy of the early Filipinos. Before the coming of the Spaniards, there was a high degree of literacy in the Philippines. So, mayroon nang pinag-aralan yung mga Pilipino noong unang panahon bago pa man dumating ang mga Espanyol. There were only few men and women who does not read and write according to Father Chirino. So, si Padre Chirino siya yung nag-aral ng lingwahe ng mga Pilipino para maisulat niya yung mga pangyayari sa isang society na naging basihan ng ating kasaysayan. Next is literature. Oral and written literature flourished prior to the coming of the Spaniards. So, mayabong na yung ating literatura bago pa man dumating ang mga Espanyol dito sa Pilipinas. So, we have the bugtong or riddles, awit or songs, legends, salawikain or proverbs, poems, myths, and also we have our folk epics so sa folk epics we have the lamang ng mga ilukado alim in nuhudhud ng mga ipugaw ulalim ng mga kalinga and then we have also the hanjong ng bikol the bantugan ng maranao at ang Indrapatra in Sulaybada ng Maguindanao. So, yan yung mga ipiko noong unang panahon. Until now, ay pinag-aaralan pa rin natin. So, next is the education. The system of education was generally informal. So, wala pa tayong formal education in general. So, mayroon tayong informal education children studied in their homes with their parents or with some old men in the barangays as tutors so sa bahay pa lang unang nag-aaral yung mga kabataan noon both boys and girls were thought reading writing arithmetic and tribal customs Boys were trained as warriors, hunters, fishermen, farmers, mariners, and craftsmen. Girls were taught cooking, sewing, stock racing, and other domestic work to make them good housewives. Formal education was also known to early Filipinos. Like in Panay, there was an existed a regular barangay school called Butuan, where the children were taught Sanskrit language, reading, writing, arithmetic, the use of weapons, and lubus, the art of acquiring amulets and talismans. Next is we have the arts. 
The early Filipinos had their arts which were part of their cultural heritage. They have their architecture. It was revealed in the Bahay Kubo style of home and in the trim sailing crafts which they built. So makikita natin ito sa kanilang Bahay Kubo at saka din sa kanilang mga ginagawang mga pangka. Next is painting. It was shown in the ancient tattoo art. Next is sculptures. They carve statues in wood, clay, gold, and ivory. They made fine carvings on the handles of daggers, rices, bulos, and knives. Next is Sciences. The early Filipinos possess some knowledge of science. They knew the curative value of medicinal plants and herbs. So noon pa man, mayroon na tayong mga herbal medicines. They knew astronomy. They steered their vessels by the direction of the stars the moon and the sun. So, wala pa mang compass noon kaya uh, dumidepende sila sa itinuturong direction ng stars, the moon, ng moon at saka ng sun. They also knew engineering. They constructed forts, irrigation, ditches, and rice terraces. The greatest engineering achievement is the famous Ifugao rice terraces that arose the admiration of the scientists and scholars from all parts of the world. They could subtract, add, divide, and multiply. They used these mathematical operations in their business transactions. Next is weights and measures. For weighing things, they used talaro, which was a kind of balance with scales. Measure of capacity. So they have the kaban, na twenty-five kantas. Salup, ito yung one ganta. Kagina, one half ganta. And gating, one upa. So, yan yung measures of capacity nila. Next is measures for length. They have dipa, the length between the tip of the thumb and the middle finger. Next is the tumuro. It is the length between the tip of the thumb and four finger. Next is sandama, with one of the hand with the five fingers pressed together. And sandal, it is the width of a finger. They have also their calendars. The Bisayan ancient calendar contained 7 days in a week and 12 months in a year. Each of the 12 months contained 30 days except the last month which had only 26 days or a total of 356 days a year. Ipugaw calendar contains 13 months in a year with 28 days in a month. It contains 364 days a year and in case of a leap year, one day is added to the 30th month to make 365 days. 
Next is coinage. The early Filipinos knew the art of coinage. Several specimens of their ancient coins were found in jars which had been excavated in Bataan and Manila. These coins were cone-shaped gold pieces usually bearing the imprint of the Malayan letter M on their flat bases. They are called piluncitus by local numismatists or collectors of coins. Next is domestic and parent trade. Domestic trade existed in ancient Philippines. So, noon pa man mayroon ng domestic trading. So, the barangay traded with barangay, island with island. Ancient Filipinos are keen traders and have traded with China for many years. And before arrival of the Spaniards, they sailed to Maloko, Malacca, Hazian, probably Achin Sumatra, Parani, Brunei, and other kingdoms. So, mayroon na tayo international trading during that time. The usual method of trading with foreign merchants was by barter. Next is agriculture and industries. Farming was the main industry of ancient Filipinos. They have two methods of cultivation. First, they have the kaingin method and regular means of tillage using wooden plows and harrows drawn by carabaos. They have also their irrigation. It was used to increase production as evidenced by the famous Ifugao terraces of northern Luzon. It is the Manawi rice terraces. Early Filipinos recognized both systems of public and private ownership of land. They have also their other industries such as fishing, mining, lumbering, weaving, tanning, metalworks, making tools and weapons, manufacture of wines, raising of poultry and stock, and ship building. So yang new other industries aside from farming. So that's all our Malayan heritage. So I'm your teacher May, ang nagiiwa ng mga katagang. If you are not willing to learn, no one can help you. If you are determined to learn, no one can stop you. So that's all. Thank you so much.